Be sure to listen tomorrow night for Ted Mack and the original Amateur Hour, broadcast over most of these ABC stations. The amazing Mr. Malone. Operator. Operator. Get me the office of John J. Malone. The American Broadcasting Company presents The Amazing Mr. Malone. An exciting half hour of mystery created by Craig Rice and starring Gene Raymond. Our locale is the city of Chicago. The time, the present. And the hero of these weekly adventures, the amazing Mr. Malone. Malone is the name. John J. Malone, attorney and counselor at law. And before we get underway tonight, I'd like to thank all our old clients and welcome the new ones who came by. We'll be here every week at this time, so if you're in the neighborhood, drop in. You're always sure to meet some interesting people. Take Paul Conrad, for example. Mr. Conrad is the stocky gentleman marching down the fourth floor corridor of the Benson building. You can tell from his walk that he's a man with confidence in himself. And when he comes to a door marked Larry Hogan, Private Investigations, he doesn't hesitate for a second but barges right in. He has. Mr. Conrad is a boy who knows his way around. Hello, Hogan. Huh? I said hello. Oh. You know, it's a funny thing, Mr. Conrad, but I was just thinking about you. All right. Let me in on the joke. Huh? You said it was a funny thing, and I could stand to laugh these days. Oh, you know what I mean. Hey, uh, why don't you sit down? What's the matter, Hogan? Don't you think I can take it standing up? What have you got for me? Well, it's like I told you on the phone, Mr. Conrad. You know, you can't rush these things. Now, uh, you take a dame, uh, I mean a lady, like your wife. Now we're getting down to cases. Who's the boy Doris has been seeing? Oh, we haven't been able to run him down yet, but... I expect I'll have something for you by next week. That's what you told me one month and 400 bucks ago. Just what kind of a chump do you take me for, anyway? No, I resent that, Mr. Conrad. Oh, don't get me wrong, Hogan. I don't blame you. I certainly acted like one. What's the man's name? Let me go. Come on, Hogan. I'm losing my patience. Well? You think you're smart? Not where my wife is concerned. Otherwise, I'd never let a gun if like you bleed me. Now, who's the boy Doris has been seeing? Didn't you hear me, Hogan? Sherman. Jackie Sherman. Jackie Sherman, huh? Where will I find him? At the Brighton Apartments. That's very kind of you, Mr. Hogan. Now, if you'll be good enough to make out a check for all the dough you've clipped me for, why, I won't trouble you again. <laughs> Hello, Jackie. Doris, what are you doing here? Now, darling, you're not going to be angry with me. I couldn't stay away. Oh, look, Doris. I don't be mean, Jackie. Honest, I couldn't help myself. I was sitting home all by my lonesome, and I started to think about you. Next thing I knew, I was in a cab. (laughs) You aren't the craziest dame. Mm Mm-hmm. What am I going to do with you? Well, if you're stumped for an idea, maybe I can give you one. Hmm. Come here, darling. You know, maybe you've got something there. Let's try that again. Yeah, go on, what? Jackie. Don't let me stop you. Paul. Hello, Doris. Why don't you introduce me to your friend? Listen, Conrad. Oh, I... you won't have to bother, darling. Obviously, he knows me. Guess that gives you the advantage. Mm-hmm. You see, Jackie, I didn't find out about you until this afternoon. Really? Uh-huh. Doris, suppose you leave us alone for a while... So we can get better acquainted. No. Go on, darling. I'll see you later. No, I'm not going. You think I'm afraid of you, Paul? Well, I'm not. I'm glad you found out about us. I'm crazy about Jackie. Crazier than you were about O'Neill or Burton or Wilson? And what was that fellow's name in Springfield? Shut up. I just want to make sure that this is different. Well, it is. I'm impressed. All right, clear out. No. I'm warning you, baby. Uh, uh, I'll call you later, Jackie. Did you hear that, Jackie? She's going to call you later. Look, Conrad, don't try and push me around. It's never been done successfully. There's a first time for everything, isn't there? Why don't you stop playing the outraged husband? You know your wife. Careful, friend. You're speaking of the woman I love. 
And she loves you, too. You mustn't forget that. Why, you... Yeah. Yeah, She's crazy about you, Jackie. I don't know what you got, but it's a cinch you aren't going to have it long. Yes, sir, what the... Hey, what happened to you, Mr. Sherman? None of your business. Yeah, but look at your face. Did you have an accident or I something? I said none of your business. You know a boy named Daniel Seymour? Yeah. Is he here now? Well, look, Mr. Sherman, like you say, it's none of my business. Like I said. Now, where is he? In the corner booth. Send a bottle over to the table. You. Huh? You Daniel Seymour? Uh-huh. You mind if I join you? So happens I do. Oh, you don't understand, No, Seymour. you don't understand, mister. I'm in no mood for company. Know what I mean? My name is Jackie Sherman. That doesn't change my mood. I'm a friend of Sonny Wilson. So? So he thought you might be receptive to a business proposition. Oh. Well, if it's business, that's different. Sit down. Thanks. Yeah? Seymour, how'd you like to make yourself 500 bucks? <laughs> It's a pretty ridiculous question, Jackie. Well, all you got to do is take care of someone for me. And what might this someone's name be? Paul Conrad. Oh, is Conrad the boy who roughed... Uh, pardon, I shouldn't even ask. This wouldn't be the same Conrad who owns a Club 59 with Jerome Barney. Does that make a difference? Certainly. Conrad and Barney are big operators, and a kid like myself don't bat in their league. Unless there's a big incentive. Know what I mean? All right, what do you want? Another 500. Fair enough. <laughs> you know, Jackie, I like a guy who don't quibble over a couple of pennies. Let me tell you, fella, you'll be happy with the service. Know what I mean? Come in. Hello, Conrad. Uh, what brings you here, Barney? I just thought I'd drop by to see how you and Doris were getting along. Just peachy. Well, uh, you couldn't expect me to know. You haven't been down at the club in quite a while. And I've had other problems on my mind. You got room for another? We're short. What do you mean, we're short? I just finished going over the books with Harold Plant. He tells me there's close to uh, $50,000 that he can't account for. It's what? Well, I didn't mean to upset you, Conrad. Still, I can't blame you. Fifty grand ain't peanuts. What happened to it, Barney? I was hoping you could tell me. Let me get this straight, you think? Uh, Just a second. Don't go away, Barney. I'll be right back. Take all the time you need, Conrad. I'll be here. Yeah, what the... Hell? Yeah? Have I the pleasure of addressing the amazing Mr. Malone? Oh, don't tell me. It can't be Lieutenant Brooks. Can't it? I know I'm asking the impossible, Lieutenant, but if you had a mind, what would be on it? You know, that layoff did you good. Before your vacation, I didn't think your jokes could get any worse, but you fooled me. You're wasting your time in homicide, Brooks. Have you ever considered radio? You like my delivery? I think it's the greatest thing since the U.S. mail. What's up? Ever hear of Paul Conrad? What about him? Got himself knocked off at 5.30 tonight. What's that got to do with me? Well, silly fools that we are, we're holding his partner for the murder. Jerome Barney? Uh-huh. You're crazy. Oh, I bet you tell that to all the cops. Barney couldn't have killed him. You didn't even know Conrad was dead. You already got to figure out Barney isn't the killer. That's right. That's my boy who said that. Unfortunately. All right, Malone, we haven't been amazed in months. Come on down here and get to work. <laughs> listening to the amazing Mr. Malone. Today, more than ever before, Americans must be made to realize that freedom and the rights of the common man are a precious heritage. History has proved that people start to lose their freedom the moment they think it is forever secure. That is why we must all work at keeping our American heritage of freedom. For freedom is everybody's job. Many nations of the world today are standing at the crossroads between free government and dictatorship. But there are those who still aspire to political, economic, and religious freedom, and they look to America as an example. Well, it goes without saying that what Americans do during the troubled months ahead 
can greatly influence the decision that the war-exhausted peoples will make. To win against the totalitarian idea, Americans must become more aware of their citizenship. As a good citizen, remember your American heritage and work to defend your individual liberties. Do this by taking a more actual part in the affairs of your community and in fulfilling at all times the duties of American citizenship. And now, back to the amazing Mr. Malone. Well, that's life for you. One minute you got it, and the next you haven't, as Mr. Conrad learned to his sorrow. And two hours after the police picked up Jerome Barney for teaching him the lesson... I was down at headquarters where I was greeted by the team that panicked the policeman's ball in 1922 and they were still using the same material. Hey, Sussman, look who's here. Do I have to, Lieutenant? Oh, now, come, Sussman. Let's have a little respect for the gentleman. This is, you should excuse the expression, John J. Malone. Attorney and counselor at law. Oh, that's a great routine you got there, fellas. Do you do a repeat performance for the coast? Where's Barney? Oh, well, Malone, seeing that he's one of your clients, we gave him the best seat in the house. Of course, it doesn't compare with the one he's going to get at Joliet. Whatever happened to all the straight men on the force? Hmm? We traded them to the straight cleaning department. That's enough out of you, Sussman. Only he can make the jokes. Professional jealousy, Hank. Come on, come on, open them up. Malone? How are you, Barney? Fine. How soon can you get me out of here? What's the matter, Mr. Barney? Haven't we made you feel at home? All right, Brooks, knock off already. What have you got on him, anyway? Where do you want me to start? At the top of the page. Okay, number one, he was spotted leaving Conrad's apartment right after the murder. Number two, the gun was in his pocket. Why did you do that, Barney? Because my fingerprints are on it. They what? Well, I lost my head, and I picked it up when I saw Conrad was dead. Oh, that's a jolly one. Come on, Sidney. Fool us both and try to use your head. Where's his motive for killing Conrad? Where's his motive? Yes. Conrad was tapping the till down at the club. The books were short to the tune of almost 50 grand. Is that right, Barney? Well, sure, but if I killed Conrad, how was I going to get my money back? Because you boys had a partnership insurance policy on the lives of each other. You know, I forgot about that. Well, it's a pleasure to remind you. But what do you say, Mr. Malone? Hmm. I wish I could think of a smart exit line. Oh, you uh, leaving already, Counselor? Yeah. Why, you haven't been at all amazing. Well, that makes us even because you haven't been at all amusing. I'll see you, girls. Just a second. Hello, Mrs. Conrad. Yes? I, uh... I wonder if you could spare me a few minutes of your valuable time. I'm afraid I'm busy. Oh, you can't be that busy. My name's Hogan. Hogan? Larry Hogan. I'm a detective. Oh, well, won't you come in? Thanks. Hey, it's quite an establishment you got here, Mrs. Conrad. Uh, can I offer you anything? I wouldn't be surprised. Of course, I told Lieutenant Brooks... Oh, uh, I guess there's been a slight misunderstanding. I'm not with the police. But you just said... Yeah, I know. I mean, I was a private detective. Hey, uh, is that bar just for show? Or is Get out. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's not be hasty, Mrs. Conrad. I know you're upset about your husband, but uh, then he was plenty upset about you. What's that supposed to mean, Hogan? Just what it sounded like. I was doing a little research for him. Get me? No. Well, uh... A couple of months ago, he dropped by my office and asked me to do some checking on you. Well? Well, if I say so myself, I'm pretty good. Didn't take me long to find out about you and uh, Jackie Sherman. The next time you do something like that, honey, you want to use a little discretion. I think I've heard enough. Good. Now, uh, let's say, suppose I drop around, let's say, every uh, Wednesday morning. What for? Well, to pick up my check. Though, actually, I prefer cash. You're wasting your time, Hogan. I don't intend to be blackmailed. Oh, now, baby, who said it was blackmail? It is buying my services. I don't need them. Uh, you're uh, making a serious mistake, Mrs. Conrad. Are you threatening me? Why, I wouldn't dream of it. Still, I got something to sell, and if you don't want to buy, I'll bet I can find myself another customer. <laughs> Yeah? I'd like to talk to John J. Malone, please. You are now. Well, uh, you don't know me, Mr. Malone, but my name is Larry Hogan. Who? Larry Hogan. I'm a private eye. A private eye? 
You've been seeing too many Bogart pictures. I bet you even own a trench coat. Look, Mr. Malone, I call to do you a favor. Why? What do you mean, why? You're representing Jerome Barney in the Conrad killing, ain't you? Well? Well, what would it be worth to your client if I can clear him? What do you want? Uh, well, uh, I'm no pig, you understand. Uh, how does 500 bucks suit you? It suits me fine. Well, the party for you to see is Mrs. Conrad. Her hubby hired me to keep tabs on her. Who was she holding hands with? A boy named Jackie Sherman. Jackie Sherman. Yeah, he lives at the Brighton. Well, thanks a lot, Hogan. I'm forever in your debt. Hey, wait a minute, Malone. What about my dough? Hey, what dough? You promised me five bills. No, I didn't. I said 500 would suit me fine, and it would. I haven't made a penny since I came back from my vacation, so if you'll excuse me, Hogan, I got to get down to cases. Yes? Mrs. Conrad? That's right. You don't know me. And what makes you think I'd like to? I've got references. What about samples? Well, that can be arranged, too. Well? In public. Uh -huh. In that case, you better come in. Thanks. What did you say your name was? I didn't. But it's Malone. John J. Malone. Offer you a drink? You can try. What do you have? Anything you've got. <laughs> You're taking quite a chance. Well, I believe in living dangerously. Well, that's a reporter for you. Uh, pardon? Well, you are a reporter, aren't you? How could you tell? Uh, well, there's a certain something about all you newspaper men. Does it show? Oh, definitely. Well, I guess there's no fooling you. You know Larry Hogan? No, no. Am I missing something? Well, if you are, I'll make up for it. Here's your drink. Thanks. Mmm. Good? I don't know when I've had better. Now, i uh, tell you what I had in mind, Mrs. Conrad. The name's Doris. Well, I didn't want to presume. How would you like to do a personal series on the murder of your husband? Hmm? Oh, what do you mean, a, a personal series? Oh, what it was like to be married to a big shot? <laughs> I'm afraid I couldn't. Why not? I never learned how to write. Now, maybe if I had someone to collaborate with, I... That's an idea. You'll be willing? No. But maybe Jackie Sherman would. What did you say? Well, let's face it, lover. You and Jackie are a natural. He probably knows more about this case than anyone else. How long have you two known each other? Get out. Uh, out? I haven't even finished my drink. You've got to get out of here. Now, now, Doris. You wouldn't <laughs> throw a glass at me. Hey, yeah, I guess you would. Get out. Now, don't be angry just because you, you missed. It's hard to hit a moving you... target. It's lucky your husband didn't present that problem. You, you. <laughs> Don't say it. It's been grand, lover. Let's do it again real soon. One, two, one. Hello? Is that you, Jackie? Yeah. Darling, you got to come over here. Out of your mind, Doris? You don't understand. A newspaper man named John J. Malone was just over here. Who? John J. Malone. He's no newspaper man. He's a lawyer. But he just told he's me... He's representing Barney. Well, that's even worse. What did you tell him? I didn't tell him anything. He knew about us. Oh, how? Hogan must have told him. Jackie, i got to see you. Don't be any stupider than you have to be, Doris. Well, I... I can't go on like this. Look, will you try and get this through your head, baby? We're through. Washed up. Finished. Oh, no, we're not. I say we are. And what about me? Uh, you don't have to worry. According to the World Almanac, there are a million other men in Chicago. How dare you say that? It's the truth, isn't it? All right, Mr. Sherman. I can see you're looking for trouble. Maybe I know just the girl to accommodate you. Hello, Seymour. Remember me? Well, the bandages look familiar. Squat. I was very surprised to hear you were still in town. Why? <laughs> you expect me to leave, Jackie? I got nothing to hide. I disagree with you. <laughs> Never seen it to fail. Look, Jackie boy, up to this point, my association with you has been very pleasant. You know why? Because you didn't tell me how to run my business. Know what I mean? Well, don't you think with Conrad dead that you... Conrad? Were... Never heard of him. Well, now, look, Seymour, you... All right, look. I'm willing to pay you 500 more to get out of town. 
Well, if you're going to put it on that basis, Jackie boy, I'd be an ingrate to refuse. Know what I mean? I don't. You What? That's what I hate about this place. They never keep out the riffraff. What are you doing here, Malone? You probably won't believe this, Seymour. Probably not. I had no idea you were here. I was following your friend. Imagine my surprise. Beat it, Malone. Say, what's the trouble with me today? Nobody seems to want me around. Maybe you ought to start reading the ads. That's a thought. And I got one, too. What do you suppose Lieutenant Brooks is going to say when I tell him that Mrs. Conrad's boyfriend has been consorting with a hired killer? Is that what you think I am, Malone? Uh Uh-huh. Well, you're wrong. I never harmed a soul in my life. But you keep talking like that and I might surprise myself. Know what I mean? Well, what are you stalling for, Sussman? King me. King you? Wait a minute, Lieutenant. How'd that checker get there? It was in that box all along. Funny, I didn't see it. Are you implying that I would cheat? No, he wouldn't do that, Sussman. He's just dishonest. Well, if it isn't the amazing Mr. Malone. What do you hear from Perry Mason? Why don't you give up, Brooks? I don't think you boys will ever replace the Keystone cops. What did you find out? Find out about what? Conrad's murder. Oh, oh, haven't you heard, Mr. Malone? We've got the killer under lock and key. It's a fellow named Jerome Barney who, by an odd coincidence, happens to be your client. You mean you haven't done any more work on the case? Well, it seemed like such a waste of effort with you on the job. Shall we get back to our game, Sussman? Listen, you comics, you know darn well that Barney didn't kill Conrad. Well, enlighten us, Counselor. Where did we make our mistake? Mrs. Conrad was holding hands with a boy named Jackie Sherman. Do tell. Twenty minutes ago, Mr. Sherman met with a fellow named Daniel Seymour. And you know what Dan Seymour does for a living. Yeah, I have my suspicions. Well, what deduction do you Hawkshaws draw from that? Now, you listen to me, Malone. As strange as it may seem, we occasionally get an idea once in a while. Now, it's your theory that Seymour gunned Conrad on behalf of Jackie Sherman. Yes. Well, there's only one thing wrong with that. When Conrad was killed, Mr. Seymour was being questioned by the police 15 miles away. He what? So I guess you'll have to find yourself another suspect. It's your move, Mr. Malone. You are listening to the amazing Mr. Malone. The United States Forestry Service has declared a state of emergency. Drought conditions across the nation have increased the danger of forest fires. Recently, 17 forest fire fighters lost their lives. Due to these unprecedented drought conditions, destructive forest fires are causing widespread damage in the West, the Rocky Mountains, New York, and in New England. The danger of similar disastrous fires elsewhere is rapidly increasing. The only obvious reason that 90% of forest fires are started is carelessness on the part of the average American. All persons entering wooded or forest areas, or even driving through in automobiles, are urged to exercise extreme care when smoking or using fire. Learn by heart these simple rules. Crush out cigar, cigarette, and pipe ashes. Break matches in two after using. Drown all campfires, then stir and drown again. And find out the law before starting any fire outdoors. Remember, nine out of ten forest fires are caused by people. You can help prevent them. And now, back to the amazing Mr. Malone. Professor Einstein had as much trouble with his theory as I had with mine. Here I had it worked out so beautifully that Dan Seymour had killed Conrad at the behest of Jackie Sherman, and according to Lieutenant Brooks, there was only one slight flaw. It never happened that way. Uh, Say Malone. Huh? Your mouth's still open. Listen, Lieutenant, are you sure that Seymour couldn't have killed Conrad? Positive. How do you know? Because at the time of the murder, we were having a little tater-tate. I got a phone call yesterday afternoon that Mr. Seymour had secured himself an assignment and a little interview might be in order. Who was your tipster? My friend didn't care to leave his name. But the point the is... The point is that at the very moment Conrad got himself gunned, I was looking into Seymour's beautiful brown eyes. Well, how about Mrs. Conrad? Yeah, hey, how about her? I mean, why couldn't she have killed her husband? No reason, except she didn't. At 5.30, she was having cocktails in Evanston. Any further nominations? Hogan. Who? Did you ever hear of a private detective named Larry Hogan? Yeah, several times. Well, he was the one who gave me Mrs. Conrad and Jackie Sherman. Well, that was sweet of him. Maybe Hogan killed Conrad. Oh, Malone, don't you think you're reaching a little? Well, why not? Where's his motive? He did some work for Conrad. By you, that's a motive? Suppose Conrad refused to pay him. Suppose they had a... 
Wait a minute, Lieutenant. I think I see it all now. You do? Yeah. Put your head on. We got work to do. Hello, Jackie. Doris, I thought I told you on the phone... Oh, now, sweetheart, you know you didn't mean that. You couldn't possibly... Couldn't I? No. You're crazy about me, and I'm crazy about you. You're crazy, period. You're wasting your time, Jackie. You can't make me angry. I know how much you care. But look what you did for me. What did I do for you, Doris? You know. Yeah, but we don't. So suppose you enlighten us, Mrs. Conrad. How did you get in here? Oh, I suppose we should have knocked Brooks. Yeah, but they probably wouldn't have paid any attention. All right, Malone, what do you want? The party who killed Paul Conrad. I thought you were a lawyer. Yeah, that's a common mistake. Actually, Jackie, I'm very bad in the courtroom, so I find it much easier if we never go to trial. <laughs> All right, Lieutenant. Like they say in the police manual, do your duty. All right. And Mrs. Conrad, by the power invested in me, no, I... Oh, no, <laughs> Lieutenant, not her. Him. What does that mean? You killed Conrad. Are you nuts? Now, there's no reason to be sore, Jackie. You went to a great deal of trouble to work out this plot. I'm just seeing to it that you get the proper billing. Say, Malone. Huh? If it's not asking too much, would you mind drawing me a diagram? Oh, I thought the doctor told you to lay off those stupid pills. Well, Malone, we can't all be as smart as you. After all, if I knew all the answers, I'd be doing guest shots on gangbusters. Well, it had to be Jackie Sherman. It had to be? Huh? Why? It couldn't be anyone else. Where was his motive? Don't tell me he was in love with Doris. Of course not, but you saw the shellacking Conrad gave him. Well, Jackie wasn't the kind to take it laying no, down. No, no, that still doesn't prove anything. Well, where do you think your tip came from to pick up Seymour? Jackie? Whom else? Well, that makes a lot of sense. Sure it does. Jackie knew his name was bound to pop up in this case. He was the most obvious suspect. So he hires a killer and then tips us off about it? Exactly. Oh, that's Miss Sugar. Ah, it's not crazy at all. Jackie had a great knowledge of psychology. He banked on us figuring the way we did. It didn't seem possible that having hired a gunman, he'd do the job himself, which is just what he did. Why do you think I had no trouble following him to Seymour? He led me there deliberately. Then I can't get over it. Did you realize how, how unusual this case was? You mean I didn't wind up with a beautiful blonde? No, no, I've seen that happen before. Oh, what then? Well, I've been running around with you, man and boy, almost three years. And this is the first time I can remember where you didn't get your head parted in the middle with a lethal weapon. Say, that's right. Yeah, let's just hope it doesn't establish a dangerous precedent. Good night, Malone. <laughs> Ever hear the story of the gangster who was haunted by ambition? He was going to be public enemy number one if it killed him. You gotta give the boy credit, he made it. I'll tell you all about it next week, so why not pick me up in my office at the same time? I'll be waiting for you. Good night. Gene Raymond was starred as John J. Malone. Our program was written by Gene Wang and directed by William P. Rousseau. Music by Basil Adler. The Amazing Mr. Malone is produced by Bernard L. Schubert. The events and characters depicted in this story were entirely fictional. Any resemblance to actual places of people living or dead is entirely coincidental. This is George Fenneman inviting you to be with us next week. The Amazing Mr. Malone has come to you from Hollywood. Now, a listening reminder. Listen now for the premiere of The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>